Okay. Um, welcome to anyone who's watching this um, through a, a, a different medium. Um, this is the 19th chapter in our book club on outstanding user interfaces with Shiny. Um, and we are, I don't know, about 80% of the way into a case study on using the tabler bootstrap four um theme uh theming page i guess um and um today uh arthur's going to take us through uh some additional kind of ways of adding interactivity to a to a shiny app um based on the stuff that's available in table Okay. Um, yeah. If you if you want to take over, that'd be great. Yeah. Quick check. Can you can you see my screen? Um, it's just the the book. Perfect. Um, so so unfortunately, I didn't have much time um, to prepare. So I, I you know I read the chapter a good bit, but I didn't. I don't have any notes to to, to share. But at the same time, uh, I feel like chapters like this that are pretty code dense might actually be better if one just shows the book because all the code is there. Um, <clears throat> so this this chapter was really was really interesting. I think it was was a nice throwback to uh, a, a section that we 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 left a little while ago. Um, so in this section, we're we're adding some interactivity to to Tabler to our Tabler template in in Shiny. Um, and when you when you say or when you read interactivity, you read JavaScript. Um, so in that sense, it's sort of a nice extended case study of how to add JavaScript into um, a, a Shiny app, um, in this case, a template. Um, and, and a lot of the material that we saw here, I'm kind of hovering on the left-hand side, uh, unleash interactivity with JavaScript. So a lot of the things that we saw in that chapter, in, in, in that section, um, come to be relevant again. And so in this chapter, um, the author <clears throat> walks us through how to add um, some interactivity to, to the Tabler template um, to a few different components. Um, we'll see how far we get. Um, I may try to go deep on one and then let that be that because it, 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 the, the moves are, are, are broadly the same, but they're gonna be add some interactivity to um, <clears throat> a progress a progress bar um, where we'll have a slider widget and then a progress bar will update. Um, uh, add some interactivity through toasts. Um, so this is a section 19.2. Um, and then uh, and then another one for trans, I think this is a particularity of 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 uh, of, uh, of tabler that the 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 drop down menu has elements in it that are themselves action buttons. So how to do that in Tabler. Uh, and then the last bit is uh, handling kind of tab tab events of uh, shifting focus in the tabs or placing a new tab at the beginning or the end or other arbitrary spots. Um, so th those are, that's kind of the topical coverage of the chapter. I'm going to zoom in on the custom progress bars. Um, so this, this, Image I feel like is a little bit of a of a red herring or, or maybe not a red herring, but a little misleading in the sense that we're not actually going to, um, you know, have a progress bar that looks like this in the application. Said so we're going to have a bit more of a, a classic classic progress bar. There will be some resemblances, but it, it's not going to be exactly this. Um, so the first thing to do as we're setting up this entire chapter is to understand that these things that exist in Tabler, the interactivity that exists in Tabler is done through a set of JavaScript scripts. And um, so what we need to first do is ensure that our template um, has an HTML dependency, um, that it depends on this custom JavaScript um, and you know we're sourcing sourcing these these files. Um, here we're sourcing them from the, the package the authors created for, 
after this book. Um, but in effect, kind of high level is that, you know, we have a set of JavaScript scripts that we need to include into our Shiny template. And so uh, the way of including them so that um, the application, you know, has clear JavaScript dependencies is to create this uh, HTML dependency object with, with HTML tools uh, and to identify the scripts that you effectively need to <clears throat> draw into your, your template, uh, into your Shiny app as, uh, as dependencies. Um, so for the custom progress bars, um, custom progress bars uh, really can consist of a few, a few, few pieces. So here, unfortunately, I didn't have time to look at what the the, the source code looks like in the temp, the tabler package. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll be brave and see if I can quickly find it. Um, but in effect, what we're what we're doing first is we're um, creating the you know, we're first creating the HTML um, framework for for the progress bar. You know, this is a div of class progress that contains a div where we're we're showing the percent percent progress. So it'll have a um, this inner div will have you know a, cla a class progress bar. It's the bar itself. This progress is a container, um, and and then we'll have some 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 values here, minimum value of 100 or 0%, maximum value of 100%. And then in the span, um, we'll show the percentage of completion. Um, let me see if I can actually find the, the reference here. Uh, this may be a quixotic adventure for something I shouldn't go looking for. Um, I'll start with something broad and see if that helps me find it. <clears throat> well, it looks like we've got the CSS right here. Uh, buttons, blog, blank cards, carousel, progress, drop down. few instances of it in use. Okay, well, I was hoping I was magically going to find it. No, no such luck. Um, we'll just take for take for granted that this is the form that the progress bar needs needs to have, right? It needs to have. Um, <clears throat> there are there are actually examples of the um, HTML code for a progress bar on the tabler. Uh, website. I've put a link. Oh, perfect! In the chat, but I, I couldn't find one that actually looks like the example in the book. To be honest, because mm. there's a few different ways of making a progress bar. It seems right. Right. This is a little, a little bit different. Um... I mean, we do. Yeah. Thanks, Russ. These. Do you have some of the resemblances here? So you've got the outer div with class progress, the inner div uh, progress bar, the value value now, value min, and value max, and then the label complete, this inner span that has a percent progress, although visually hidden is, I think, not part of not part of this. But in any event, like we're 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 trying to write with our um, uh, kind of a, an HTML component, a component in HTML that consists of a few, few, uh, few elements. Um, so we need to first create this, 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 this uh, entity, and then the next task is, you know, we we have this thing; it exists, um, and we need to set its, we need to update its value to set its value, and to do this, we need to have a method whereby R you know, in, in, in Shiny, we can send instructions to JavaScript to, to update this um, this HTML component, right? To update, in particular, like the percent progress um, component. Um, so to do that, um, we'll we'll write this function called update tabler progress. Um, we'll take the ID of the um, 
of the progress bar, um, the value that we want to update the progress bar to, um, this pass the session object uh, so that you know R captures the session piece. And then we're going to construct, uh, what we're going to do is we're basically going to send, um, we're going to use a message handler and send a message from R to JavaScript, and then JavaScript will basically react to that message. So we need to first compose the message. The message here consists of a few things. Um, first, the ID of the element, and um, it's it's um, kind of namespaced for, you know, we got the session namespace of the, the ID, so we can properly identify within the DOM the, the element that we want to update, um, and then the value that we want to pass to that, that element, so the value value component. And then here, so first we compose the message. Now we're going to send the message. So through the session object, we're going to do use a send custom message, which um, I guess is you know, straight through the WebSocket. I guess, you know, like R is sending a message to JavaScript side and JavaScript will do something. So anyway, we're sending a message. Importantly, it's it the message is kind of like it's emitted and, and caught on the other side through this 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 type uh, uh, argument, this type handler. So update progress is the name of the, the type. Uh, and then we're going to pass the message. So this is going to be a list. And because it's a list, it'll be easily translated from an R list into a JSON uh, object on, on the JavaScript side. Then on the JavaScript side, uh, we'll need to write a function that that basically reacts to the message sent over by by Shiny. So we'll create this function um, using kind of the Shiny's JavaScript method here. So add custom message handler. We're looking for a message of this type, update progress. And then we're going to um, invoke this function. Um, that's uh, a function of the message that's being passed over. Um, and then here we're going to write some, some jQuery. Um, or I guess it's jQuery, uh, that's going to select, first select the uh, select the element in the DOM corresponding to the pro our progress bar, the progress bar that we want to update. Um, so here we've got the hash sign since it's the ID, uh, and then we're taking from the message the ID component. So you'll see here, remember up here uh, in the message we sent over, we, we sent over the ID of the element that, that we wanted to look for and update. Uh, so we're saying, you know, select that element, and then and then we're going to change the, the um, change the c change the CSS, um, changing the width to some percent. So we're increasing the size of the the progress bar from whatever it's, or rather, changing the the size of the progress bar from its initial value to the value that we instruct. Um, uh, that we're kind of sending from R to, to JavaScript. So JavaScript will dutifully change the, the width of um, of, uh, of this. So let's see, let's go back up then to the CSS right here. Um, yeah, you can see it in that style row. Um, so there's- yeah. Okay, there we are, yep. Yeah. That's yeah, the thing that gets updated, on. but the there is actually um, for for like accessibility that area value now thing slightly below it mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> probably should also be updated when updating the the the, the oh the right um, I, and, I it's, and it's it, not and it, here yeah, yeah yeah I do but I don't know whether it whether there may be some actually it's getting updated so it's getting i guess it's getting set okay so it's getting mm. set you're right but then value value you're right it seems not to be updated in this particular case but you're well, right I, I, I guess that's probably it, it not particularly important illustrative yeah. for yeah for exactly the book but I, I imagine it might be a little bit more important if you're um, if you're visually impaired and you're running yeah, a, a long yeah, exactly. gap and things, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So th these are kind of the three 
components then, you know, again, to kind of recap, we've got, we're, we're kind of composing with R, we're composing the, the HTML component, this, this table or progress bar. <coughs> um, with, we're writing, we're writing an R um, function that will um, effectively like update the value of the progress bar, bar by sending a message from R to JavaScript. And then lastly, we have a JavaScript function that reacts to that, uh, to the message that's sent over from, um, from, uh, from R. So it's taking this, this message and then taking the components of that message and then performing an action. So selecting the element of the DOM and then changing, changing the CSS so that the bar, bar changes um, in, in, in size or in width. <clears throat> um, and then if we kind of put this all together, it would look, it would look a little something like, like, like this. Um, <clears throat> and then we can see how it, it looks. Uh, there's a little screenshot that shows how it looks. So, you know, here we can set our, our UI in the app. We have the, the tabler, tabler, um, um, body. So here, I didn't quite follow this particular piece, but they have this this particular slider input um, yeah. that comes from a different a different package, <clears throat> and and so this is going to be the input that you know the user is going to adjust, and then its value is going to get sent. Um, uh, yeah, to, I think I think it's this. just a, a way to illustrate because. Um, it's it's a way to just illustrate how your how you could update that progress bar yeah um in code um so i mean the, an alternative might be to you know um sys.sleep a few times or something and mm. update the progress bar as as you go but um but with this app as written like the user can specify Right, right. I mean, I mean, I guess I, I guess I got that part. It was more that um, I'll see if we can find that text. If there's there's like okay. something something special. Uh, I mean, I guess I we'll get we'll get to this part a little bit later. Now I know I think I'm remembering why they've chosen this. But so I mean, basically we have <clears throat> we have a slider input, um, <clears throat> and then this is basically you can think of it as an as an output. This is our progress bar, our table or progress bar, <clears throat> and then as you might expect on the server on the server side, like as we update. The value of the, the the progress the progress bar, then <clears throat> then we'll update then we'll update the um, our our tabler progress bar, um, and of course remember this is going to send the message to JavaScript. JavaScript will do its thing, and then through JavaScript this 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 will get this uh, output will get updated. <clears throat> Pardon me, and it look a little something like this. So you have um, kind of the, the progress bar here, this kind of thin progress bar on the top, you drag, or sorry, slider, you drag it, and then the this this is the progress bar right here, this longer, thicker piece, and this will get updated as uh, as you adjust the values of the progress bar. <laughs> um, so this is a way to kind of have this interactivity where you're working from where data are <clears throat> getting sent from R to JavaScript and from JavaScript, you know, pages getting updated. Um, and, and it's operating through basically this kind of session object or like this ability through like the web, the web socket connection that, you know, this information gets passed from, from um, between the various components, right? But it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so instead, what we could do is is we could kind of think of there being like a trigger a trigger on the page, um, and and we could kind of like rewrite um, we could rewrite our JavaScript in such a way that it would we wouldn't have to kind of recover the value, or, or rather we wouldn't have to send the message from Shiny to JavaScript, and so JavaScript could simply take that value from the page itself and then update the page right so we could observe um observe this 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 uh 
the value of the slider and then um, and then update update the page. Um, so here's a function that that basically does it's a JavaScript function that that, that does that. Um, so it's kind of looking at the whole document, um, and then we're looking at this this one event like on on the shiny page being connected. I, I guess it's kind of a little bit like JavaScript's like document ready or or whatever that is. It, it seems like to me like somewhat the the equivalent of that. So when that event happens. Um, then we'll 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 let the the value of the slider, sorry, um, we'll we'll look for the slider by a certain ID. So we'll find the element on the page with this particular ID. In this case, trigger trigger ID, um, and then store that in slider. <clears throat> and it turns out with this no slider no ui slider so this is the slider the the sorry the um the um, slider input that was chosen here so this is no ui slider um this is from the shiny widgets package it seems like it has an api that allows it to interact like if we want like directly with javascript so it seems like it has a, a method here so like take the slider um and then it has a method on like on update then you have this callback function, which basically, as I understand, is like you know, find find the progress bar um, by its ID. So this would be kind of like the target, what they're calling the, the target. So the trigger is the slider, the target is the the progress bar, and then adjust the width of uh, you know adjust the width attribute in the CSS of that of that target um, uh, progress bar on the page. Um, and so we could simply take this JavaScript and, and instead of writing some R function that uses R to talk with JavaScript through the intermediary of, of the message handler, instead we could just we could just write in a script tag that contains exactly the function that we we had we had above. And so here in the book, the author calls this update tabler progress two. So this is kind of a second iteration of update tabler progress function. Um, that that kind of achieves the same, but through different different means. So here we're using pure pure JavaScript in a sense, um, where Shiny is just uh, writing a writing a script tag in in the page. Um, so in that way, we hmm? yeah. It seems very strange to me. I don't quite I don't quite follow it. So um, so the the event that triggers an update to the um, the tabler slider mm -hmm. is when the shiny app is um, in a ready state. So I, I think it's an, it's not looking for that means. element until shiny is ready. So I guess they're waiting like wait until the page has been drawn, right? And then, okay. And then not, at least that's how I'm reading it. Um, so it's really it's the the event it's responding to is that slider dot no UI slider dot on exactly okay. exactly. Right. So there, okay. there's some okay. there's some up I guess there's some update event that's that's emitted by by mm. the slider UI that you can you can kind of listen listen for basically, um, and in this outer wrapper is just to make sure that. You prevent like some of these racing conditions things yeah. that the, the, you just wait until everything in the DOM is everything in the app in the shiny app is drawn before before you you execute the JavaScript. Okay. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So you just take the script. You could you could write it into the script tag of the in in the page, um, and you know now we could rewrite our we could rewrite our shiny app and then have. Um, you know this update tabler progress too. Um, so you could have, you know, one slider uh, progress value one, prog progress value two, and then then have kind of these tabler progress uh, things linked linked to. Um, um, actually, sorry. Before I do some quick hand waving, let me actually break this down and make sure that I've got this right. Huh. Interestingly, the server here is empty because we're not relying on shiny server logic to update. We're instead relying on JavaScript. 
So then <clears throat> we're left with the UI. Um, you've got um, these two things, which are which are actually going to resolve to script tags in the in the page. Um, then you have the the table or body. Uh, you've got and you have two two sliders right here. Progress value one, progress value two by the. Um, and then you've got they're they're set. Um, so you've got the sliders and then the corresponding progress bars. And then what's kind of interesting, the author points out is when you, so maybe let me let me go back. Is like if you think back to our kind of progress progress um, progress uh, or tabler um, our tabler progress bar iteration number one, where we're relying on. R to pass a message to JavaScript and JavaScript updates the page. When you stop the Shiny app and then try to update the pay, update the slider, nothing will happen because this, this um, or, or rather the, the progress bar won't be updated because this linkage between um, R and JavaScript is kind of through the, I guess the web socket, right? And so th that's closed as soon as you kill the page, basically. On the other hand, what's kind of interesting about this implementation is once you stop the page, you can still continue to update. Uh, so you can like change the slider on progress uh, progress value uh, one, and then the progress then the, the, the progress bar will, will continue to update because this connection isn't going through shiny. It's not through the websocket, it's just through it's just through JavaScript. Um, so that's kind of an interesting, an interesting um, consequence of this the second approach. Um, it's a lot less um, how do you put it um, idiom like idiomatic R <laughs> because there's not so much R here, um, but it has this nice nice little side effect. Uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting interesting thing the author pointed out. Which kind of underscored the, you know, like the role of actually working through the, this, this, this message, this message, you know, typically in in when in R or Shiny, where you're working through R, R working through this custom message handler, you're you're using the, the machinery that Java's can or Shiny's kind of JavaScript side has put in place for you to pass pass custom yeah. messages from, from R to to JavaScript, but it's not the only way of doing things. Yeah. I, I... As an R developer, I think the 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 R route is sometimes a lot easier to um, find. You know, it's a lot easier to work out yeah, the sure. code that you need to write. Um, I imagine for someone with considerably more front end experience, yeah. that that would wouldn't be the case. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah for, for for me, this is not the path. <laughs> <laughs> It's it, it's interesting though. I mean, it, no, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely interesting. Um, and and so kind of like the remainder of the chapter is a little bit more of the same, like thematically, right? So in, in the sense that for each subsequent um, component of the page, we're composing the composing the component using R to write. HTML, um, and then and then we're 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 creating some functions to update the uh, the UI, um, writing an R function that captures some parameters, composes a message, sends the message to JavaScript, and then lastly writing some JavaScript that that you know, receives the message from R and performs an action. Right, so that's kind of the the I guess. Uh, to to use the chapter name from our packages, that's that's the whole game, right? That's basically the, the what what's done uh, for various different components in in, in this. Um, so I mean, here's I can go through a few other. Ex I mean, I could maybe with the time we have, I, I, whether we could like jump to any example that's of interest to you, Russ, or or just like march linearly forward. It, I'm kind of indifferent. Um, um to be honest, I'm a bit more interested in the tab events than the um, the the toasts. But sure, uh, what what was the third section? I can't remember that bit. So this is a bit. This is a bit, frankly, a little bit kind of hard to follow, at least without some visual uh, okay. um, pieces. Where, where um, 
In Tabler, there's a drop down menu, but the list items in the drop down menu are action buttons um, somehow. Okay. And so it, it's just a matter of composing that. Like you, I'm kind of a bit more drawn to the tab events because I feel like that's yeah. closer to, to the world in which I live. Um, uh, right. Um, I think there might be some parts of this that, that are tabler specific, or sorry, tabler specific. Um, but we'll kind of see as we as as we go. Yeah. Now, um, in a, a couple of chapters ago, we did implement um, a, a, a tabbed page. So that was there already is the functionality to like go from the first tab to the second tab, and and right. you know the appropriate elements are displayed to you. So th th this section's more about like ensuring um, R knows which tabs displayed. Is it or something? It, it, in this one, it seems to have more to do with the, the, the kind of inserting or removing tabs. Um, oh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is maybe a different, a different, I guess, a different workflow, I suppose. I mean, for me, I'm just thinking, you know, in my mind, like shiny JS uh, disable and then have the, the, the ID of the, of, of the tab. I mean, this kind of provides a little bit of a different, different method for the, for the same or, and some other similar, similar things. Um, but you know, as as kind of before, we're you know, like first composing with with R the 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 JavaScripts or, or sorry the HTML. So um, you've got uh, like a nav uh, um, a nav item that will look something like this. So it'll be a, an li element list element um, that contains you know these these things. Uh, then you'll have your 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 tab your tab panel that'll have certain classes. Um, and so first step is kind of to, uh, um, or actually wait. Um, okay, I guess they, maybe they, stip, they skip that step um, of actually composing it. Sorry, I was, I was misremembering. Okay, no, here it is. Here it is, now our menu item. Um, I mean, so so I guess what what they're they're, they're saying is that we want to have some kind of what we're going to do is try to create some function that's going to be insert table or tab. That'll be akin to Shiny's like native insert tab. I've actually never used insert tab. I'm gonna be interested mm -hmm. to look back and see what actually it does. Have you used a Russ? Yeah, I, I haven't really needed to now, but uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, me neither. Um, and so so basically, we'll, we'll we'll have some function like this that'll have the the, the ID, um, uh, I guess a tab name, and then a position, whether it's before or after the target tab. Um, and then whether it's in focus or not, uh, and then then we got the session object that we're passing. Um, right, and then I think they're saying just so this works well with with shiny modules, or we're going to need to kind of namespace each or namespace the the ID here. Um, so first step, you know, after this kind of overview is to um, compose the the menu items. So uh, the menu items. Are they're, we're gonna they're gonna look like like this the list the list items, um, so we're gonna compose that you know give them a class uh, and like a, have a, a link tag give them a class and have these um, these um, data whoops sorry uh, <clears throat> these data attributes um, uh, role um, etc. Um, and then, as before, we're 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 going to kind of compose this uh, message for 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 R to 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 send over. Um, so we're going to compose a message, and then there's this function that's from uh, the author's package called drop nulls. And I think I haven't looked at it, but I think basic, you know, I can easily imagine what it does by its name is if you have a if you have a list and then some components are null, just drop those from the message. So you're sending over a, a, a list or a, like a, a JSON object that only contains what is useful. Um, um, and uh, and then you know, as before, we'll do the send custom custom message, right? Um, and uh, we'll have some type 
the of, of the message uh, and then the message that's sent over and so then we'll have some javascript that'll look for that'll look for this that'll look for this uh this type of message so as before uh we've got we've got a function that's kind of listening you know we have this this uh custom message handler um that is going to look for a message of this type and then then take that message and perform some some actions um so we'll take the <clears throat> i guess it's going to take from the message the content and the link um as well as the target we'll just add we'll prepend this so that it's an id um and then uh if if the target um is meant to be before then what we're so we'll take from the message of the position whether this uh tab is supposed to be before or after um uh so we've got this is the um before or sorry, the after part this is the before part um then we'll take the div tag find the div tag here so this is the the from from this component of the message the div tag uh and insert uh the target tab before um so we'll, we'll basically select that tag and then there's this method insert before um and the target uh target id um and then we'll construct let's see insert before okay yeah. and then we'll insert before this like uh yeah go ahead russ have, have you seen these the, the dollar signs in variable names before in 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 JavaScript the let dollar div tag and I like. haven't but I am not a big JavaScript I'm, I I don't know much JavaScript oh, okay. so yeah, it's, it's but it's funny, new it's new to you it is new to me I I hadn't seen I was wondering whether it was a, a jQuery thing or something like that but I, hmm. I I don't know I haven't seen it I I used to program in Perl and um you have dollars and apps and oh, you know, those kind of symbols ahead of the variable name quite often but i i hadn't seen it before in javascript so um yeah or i was thinking like i've seen it also in mustache uh that the templating language uh yeah I yeah. yeah so yeah that's that's an interesting remark i hadn't thought about that at all um actually let me look back up here so we've got the target i uh, ah right okay it's it's like data target it's like a kind of it's a hint for the developer that this is something that will be used by jquery oh oh okay um yes sorry i hadn't seen that before so uh, presumably if you wanted to um so that dollar message dot content is like a kind of it's like a jQuery variable that you can then call ah, jQuery okay. methods on. Okay. Um, and by putting a, a... And then when you invoke it, it, it looks a, like a jQuery yeah, 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 yeah. script. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to put in. No, no, like, no. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I'm, I'm muddling my way through the script. This one actually I hadn't looked at in as great a detail, but nevertheless, it's more of more interest than the other stuff I kind of muddled through earlier. Um, yeah, so insert after the target ID. Um, and then I guess you're putting your, let me look back up here. Let's see the data. Data, data target. Okay, data toggle, data value. It's not leaping leaping out to me where that's that's coming in actually.
although I see it here in this in this one we're composing it here's so the list item strange the template that they're showing here doesn't have it or at least I'm not seeing it it's like an additional attribute here uh, Well, anyway, I'll, maybe I'll come back to that part, but um, it seems like it's in, inserting it's inserting the the tab um, in the nav bar after after or before a certain position, like named uh, position, um, and then lastly, uh, if 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 we basically wanted to have have it be as if the user had clicked on that tab, then you have the select argument. So if you want to select that, the tab that you've just inserted. So if if the, if that's the case, if that's you, you said you, you know, that value is true in the select, uh, so whatever you're specifying here in the in the message, um, then um, Composing the new tab ID. I clearly see the comment, but I'm trying to work out how that's the case. Um, oh, okay. I see the very last bit. So you're selecting, you're selecting the, you're selecting the the list element, so the tab that has the target ID, and then there's this tab show um, method. So show, I guess it's kind of like as if the user had clicked. At least that's what I'm intuiting here. Russ, Trevin, have either of you gentlemen worked out what this this target ID bit is uh, meant to be about? Well, no. I mean, I had a look through the Tabler web page for for like tabs, um, and couldn't see it. But it does remind me of I, I've I have seen a data target attribute in other shiny UI elements before that, you know, independently of this thing. So I wonder whether it's something that's. I mean, I think this is, this, isn't this just like a custom attribute? I'm trying to remember yeah. from our other book club, uh, Russ, like there was that data dash, mm. the data, the data dash attributes, I think are like custom attributes that could old, you know, like developer defined, arbitrarily yeah. like developer defined data. Uh, yeah. I seem to remember we we're like using that for various widgets um, somehow. I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's just so that one can select, um, can select that. So what's a little puzzling is you've got the ID, input ID, let's see, what is input ID in this context? Um, are, are tabs in Shiny, or are they considered an input? I have an input I ID on I don't think so, um, no. Um, Just uh, I'm just gonna
Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd be surprised the tab panels don't aren't even obliged to have an ID. Oh, um, and it's just a straight. I think it's just a straightforward ID if I'm if I remember correctly. Yeah. Oops. Didn't realize until recently the Posit have have uh, they've rewritten the shiny page with Quarto because uh, you've got this nice uh, Quarto search mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, tab set panel, tab panel. Are there any links? Uh, anyway. I mean, I guess I get the idea. I'm a little, a little puzzled by the mechanics, though. Yeah, yeah. Any questions, comments? One question of mine, which you know shows that I really need to revisit the the JavaScript <laughs> chapters, is it, is really the only component within our context of. I mean, so you know, for all of the examples that they're using, they're the you know, we're sending. We've got this. Um, send custom message on our side and then we've got the add custom message handler on the shiny side is that the only real mechanism of communicating between r and and in uh javascript um well not not exactly no the i mean for a for an input element you might you you'd you'd have to define a all those like you know, set, find is it set input and, or, oh, here we go yeah, shiny yeah. set input um, but they may i mean those the, this is kind of the, the the typical route for sending data or um or whatever from from R to the browser. Um, because I mean, a lot of the stuff that you know, you don't actually write this kind of code all that often, but a, a lot of the code that you do write ends up d depending on precisely these kinds of message sending lower level functions okay uh yeah i don't know i was just kind of left after this chapter think thinking it was like well you know i mean if 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 this is the principal or only way of doing so it's like okay great i've i've i now have and now have the keys of doing this like mm. conditional and <laughs> conditional and figuring out javascript um but uh, you know, I was also left wondering: is like, is there a broader toolkit that uh, that just happens not to be presented here? Um, hmm. Anyway, I'll, I'll have to revisit. I, I, that. So, uh, no. John yeah. John Cohen's book uh, to refresh my memory. Hey, cool. Anyway, um, that's 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 it for me. The yeah, kind brilliant, of, uh, brilliant. Me, meandering nice. through the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, great. Uh, okay. Well, uh, thank. Yeah, thanks for taking us through it. Um, yeah, it, that the the tab set part was a little more complicated, wasn't it? And, um, uh, yeah. Uh, cool. Um, so next week we are looking at um, kind of. I haven't read the next chapter. It's about validating template elements, but I'm not quite certain what that will mean in practice. Um, 
yeah um Cool. Um, yes, thanks, Arthur. Um, we'll see everyone next week. I don't actually know whether we've got someone booked to speak next week, but uh, if not, it'll be me. Um, and um, cool. Um, yes, I'll see you all then. <laughs>